Dear friends, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are going to learn dot sum method. There are so many complex questions can be asked just on dot sum. Let me show you some of them. Video agenda, introduction to dot sum method in link that we will get it. And I have framed few questions. For example, find the correct link query to calculate the sum of integers inside a list. So you have a list which contains some numbers. How would you calculate the sum? Second, find the correct link query to combine two list and calculate the sum of two list. For example, here the list one contains one, two, three, four, five, and the list two contains one, two, three, four, five. How can you combine and calculate the sum? That also we will learn in this video. And also we will see find the correct link query to sum of a salary column. So if there is a salary column inside a data table. How can you calculate the sum of entire salary in this column? Okay. And also one interesting question is what will be the output of a list sum if the list is empty? For example, your list is empty. There's no data. What will be the output? So all these interesting questions you will learn in this video. So please note, do not skip the video because you might lose a key concept which is required. So in-depth learning is essential. So do not skip the video. So let's get started. Introduction and demo of some method. So how is the syntax written for some? It is quite simple. You take the collection name. Collection name could be data table, array, list, anything. Now if it is a data table, it's slightly different. You have to use a lambda function and the column name upon which you would like to add the sum method. Right? So this is the syntax. So what is the purpose of it? The sum method in link is used to calculate the sum of numeric values inside a collection. To calculate the sum of numeric values. What it returns? The return type depends on the type of elements in the sequence. For example, if the sequence or the collection, when I say sequence is a collection, if it contains integer, then the output would be integer. If it contains double, the output will be double, right? Based on your input, the calculation would happen. The sum method is applicable to a sequences of integers or long or floating points and double and decimals. Okay, the sum can be used for all these different kinds of data types. All right, now important point. If the sequence is empty, if the collection is empty, the sum method returns the additive identity for the numeric type. For example, if you have used zero uh, as an integer uh, list you have created, for example, then the output would be zero. If you have created a float point, then the output would be 0, 0.0. Okay, very important point. Now it's time to really see the demo in UiPath. Let's move on to UiPath Studio. To start with, here I have created a list one variable which contains one, two, three, four, five. Now here there is a sum variable which is an integer type, and I need to write a link query which is going to sum all these values present inside the list. One, two, three, four, five. So how to do that? Let's see it here. In this assign activity, I am going to click here and start writing the code. The code is quite simple. You first take the name of your collection which is list one dot then you write the method sum now because there are no condition here it is a list it is not a data table to pass anything within the brackets so i leave as it is and all you have to do simply hit on save and i'm printing that in a message box so first of all let's see the output so one two three four five what would be the sum 15 right so you can see the output 15 has appeared so this one you have learned pretty simple collection name and sum so let us write it in a notepad. First, what we have done, sum all values inside a list. So what is the code? List one, for example, dot sum. So this is the code you have learned. Now let's move on to second. If list is empty, what happens? Let's see that. Okay, if list is empty, then what would happen? Let's see that. For this, let me go to the list and remove all the numbers and make it empty and save it. Now, if I'm going to run this, what would happen? The output should be zero. Okay, 
it will not throw an error it will the output should be zero so this is your second learning the output would be will be zero clear now the third situation will get on to adding two lists this will be interesting for example list one and list two okay when you add two list what happens and how to do that let's see it so here first of all what i have done i have created a small list here okay the first list one contains one two three four five is there in list one variable and second one i have created one two three five both are having the same value but again these are the two things now to add this list to first of all the sum remember the concept of sum applies to a collection you saw that right it applies directly to a collection so what we have to do this list one and list two we will add and make a list three i'll show you this is an one way this is also alternative way i'm going to show you first we will add this two to a list three so how to do that so for that for example i've created a list three variable okay all our integer types for this let me click here and let's expand this so the very first thing we will use list one dot zip so this is the method that we'll be using the zip is responsible to add to list and make it to one more new list okay so list one dot zip and then i have to pass the second list which is our list two comma i'll create a simple lambda function here x comma y because there are two different uh, elements coming from two different lists so list one okay and list two so now it is saying x is containing list one variables list two will be having all the values will be there in the y now here what we will do we will simply say x plus y okay now when you do this when you do this hit on save uh, let's see what is the error i numerable of system system regulation so in 32 so all you have to do simply add a two list here dot two list okay now what happens by this is so once you add both these collections it will create a list 3 first of all let's print this uh, particular list 3 okay string dot join list 3 let us print it and see how the value is coming for the moment let me disable the other activities okay so let's see how that printing is happening so first list containing 1 2 3 4 5 and the second also contains 1 2 3 5 so when you zip it what happens let's first see that okay so what happened 1 plus 1 become 2 2 plus 2 become 4 3 plus 3 6 8 10 so it is just combining the first element with the first element of the second list then the second element of your first list to second element of your second like that it has added and it has created a second list now after the second list is created then you can do a list three dot sum for example let me stop this for example let me remove this one so here i can write a expression list three dot sum this is one way this is the first way now if i use a message box below this or let it be there i will enable this message box so now if it prints some you can see the output would come okay so the first it is printing uh, this one this message box is getting executed after that all the sum is 30 getting it we got the sum of two list so this is one way the first way after that let's see the second way okay let me enable so what is the second way it is pretty simple the same function you are writing list one zip list two function x y x plus y and after that because this entire output is a collection right so you, instead of converting to two list and then adding a sum you can directly use this dot sum method so if you do this and if you are going to print it so you are learning different different ways of achieving the same thing so it is printing all the message boxes on the top the first output came 30 and the second output this one okay getting it so these are the couple of learnings that you have got so let me copy this code and put it in the 
notepad okay i'll try to pass this code in the description of the youtube video this you have got it now fourth we will learn how do you sum in a data table so this is my data table you can create a simple data table which contains salary and some of the values are there so if you sum this what is the value i'm getting around 130000 okay now let's see how this can be done on uapa studio the very first thing what you need you have to read that excel file put it into read range right and then uh, put it into a data table this is pretty simple you do it so once it is stored in the data table then what you do how will you sum it for that let's learn the code so data table dot as enumerable this is very important you have to first convert it to data rows and then here you write the method sum method now i will use the lambda function this is important because you have to iterate through multiple data here so lambda function because the item the value could be in any of the column right it could be in the first column second column third column it could be anything so lambda function is required and here i would pass x so which column contains my salary value the column salary so what i will do i'll simply write here within double quote salary and then this has to be converted to integer right this needs to be converted to integer do it again dt dot as innumerable dot uh, sum and then function write x and then x within the bracket double quote salary and we have to convert this entire thing to integer then only the sum can happen right convert it to integer put a bracket okay uh, so once it's converted what would happen this value will be sum sum will happen for this all these values let me save it because we are converting to integer the sum variable also should be integer type now let us run it okay now you can see the output 130000 has arrived so let me copy this code to a notepad data table sum okay okay so this is the code for this so thank you guys for watching like this i'll come up with more such interesting contents which would help you to prepare for your uipath certification and it is going to help you a lot in your projects when you encounter such situations so thank you guys for watching let's move on to our next topic